Tos të bartë të mëhemurit që sakën të master dikri under supervision Dr. Imen Muhammad Abdel Hakim, Assistant Prof of Obstetric and Women's Health and Nursing, Faculty of Nursing, Bena University, Prepared by Asme Sobhi. Objective, General Objective, at the end of this literature, the post-graduate graduate student will be able to upgrade its knowledge and practice postpartum hemorrhage. Specific objective, at the end of this literature, the postgraduate student will be able to define of a postpartum hemorrhage, identify a risk factor of a postpartum hemorrhage, differential between the types of postpartum hemorrhage, understand the causes of a postpartum hemorrhage, define complication of a postpartum hemorrhage, Discuss management of postpartum hemorrhage. Discuss of prevention postpartum hemorrhage. Outline Introduction Definition of a postpartum hemorrhage. Risk factor of a postpartum hemorrhage. Types of a postpartum hemorrhage. Causes of primary and secondary postpartum hemorrhage. General and specific symptom of a postpartum hemorrhage, complication of a postpartum hemorrhage, management of a postpartum hemorrhage, prevention of a postpartum hemorrhage. Introduction Although pregnancy is a normal physiological event, it is still threatening a woman life. Postpartum hemorrhage is the leading cause of maternal mortality worldwide. It is the attributed cause for 13 of all maternal deaths and 46 of all direct maternal deaths. 99% of all postpartum hemorrhage deaths were avoidable. Definition Postpartum hemorrhage is defined as Vaginal bleeding in excess of 500 ml after vaginal birth or 1000 ml after cesarean birth in the first 24 hours after delivery to the end of a barbarian and effect on a maternal general condition. Risk factor of a postpartum hemorrhage, over distension of the uterus, multibara more than five, prolonged labor, cesarean birth or previous uterine surgery, manual removal of a placenta, previous postpartum hemorrhage, placenta previa or accreta. Clotting disorder, drug as prostaglandin or magnesium sulfate. Disseminated intravascular coagulation, uterine fibroid, used forceps or vacuum extractor, systematic disease, leukemia, coagulation deficit, pregnancy induced hypertension, deep anesthesia. Types of postpartum hemorrhage. Primary postpartum hemorrhage is described as that occurring within the first 24 after a delivery. Secondary postpartum hemorrhage may be delayed, occurring more than 24 hours after delivery. Most frequently occur one or two weeks after delivery, but may occur up to six weeks postpartum. Causes of primary postpartum hemorrhage, uterine atony, laceration, hematoma, coagulation disorder. Uterine atony described a lack of a muscle tone. The postpartum uterus is large after the placenta detaches. The uterus normally contracted and the muscle fiber muscle compress bleeding vessel. If uterus is atonic, the muscle fiber are flaccid and do not compress the vessel. This allows the blood vessel at 
the placenta site to bleed massively. We try and over distension, prolonged labor, or using a drug during pregnancy may lead to relax of uterus and to become atony. Causes of uterine atony General causes, local causes, nervous causes, idiopathic causes. General causes, anemia, multibara, prolonged labor, excessive sedation, and deep anesthesia. Local causes, over distension of the uterus, uterine fibroid, incomplete placenta separation with retained fragment, presence of uterine scar, blood clots or piece of membrane, Rapid or precipitate labor, placenta previa, abruption placenta. Nervous causes, full bladder or rectum reflexes inhibit uterine contraction. Idiopathic causes, past history of postpartum hemorrhage and antipartum hemorrhage. Acceleration of reproductive tract. Laceration of the perineum, vagina, cervix, or area around the urethra can cause postpartum hemorrhage. Trauma is more likely to occur if forceps or vacuum is used in labor. Blood loss in laceration is usually brightly red and the uterus is firm. Hematoma of reproductive tract. Hematoma is a collection of blood within the tissue. And the result from birth trauma is usually on the vulva or inside the vagina. They may be easily seen as bulging mass. Mess. If it deep within the vagina are not visible from the outside, the woman with a hematoma usually have severe pain that not relieved with analgesic blood pressure for respiration and the pulse rate increase. Sign and symptom of primary postpartum hemorrhage. General tachycardia, hypothermia, pallor, hypotension, coldness, thirsty, irritability, restlessness, exhausted. Abdominal examination. If bleeding is concealed in the uterus atony, uterus is soft, distended, no tone. Causes of uterine atony. General causes, local causes, nervous causes, idiopathic causes. General causes, anemia, multibara, vaginal examination, in case of trauma, cervical birth, canal laceration or injury, cervical birth, canal laceration or injury, bleeding will be bright red in color, Bleeding will be dark red retained fragment. Diagnosis CBC, cross matching blood cropping test, RH factor test. Late postpartum hemorrhage secondary, it is bleeding which occur after the first 24 hour of delivery and up to the end of periphery. Causes of secondary postpartum hemorrhage. Retain the product of conception as placental fragment, accessory loop, placenta polyp, blood clot, retain the piece of membrane. Infection, it is due to separation of septic sore, through site of bleeding, placenta site, caesarean wound cervix. Subinversion of uterus is the most common cause of the late postpartum hemorrhage. Causes of primary postpartum hemorrhage, uterine atony, laceration, hematoma, coagulation disorder.
vital sign tachycardia decrease blood pressure and decrease oxygen saturation comfort level severe rectal and pelvic pain skin cool damp and pale complication of postpartum hemorrhage hypovolemic shock and associated organ failure include renal failure stroke and myocardial infraction may occur postpartum hypopituitarism shahin syndrome may occur and inability to breastfeed fatigue hypo uh, hypogonadism and hypotension acute renal failure dvt and pulmonary embolism anemia delusional co agrupacy occur when crystallitis and or serum poor blood product or given in large volume previous sepsis breast infection mastitis risk for exposure to blood product as allergic or febrile reaction have and edema severe hypoxemia tachycardia cyanosis hypotension and fever acute immune hemolytic reaction infection hysterectomy maternal death vaginal examination in case of trauma cervical birth canal laceration or in cervical birth canal laceration or injury bleeding will be bright red in color bleeding will be dark red retained fragment diagnosis cbc cross matching blood grouping test rh factor test local causes over distension of the uterus uterine fibroid incomplete placenta separation with retained fragment presence of uterine scar blood clots or piece of membrane rapid or precipitate labor placenta previa abruption placenta nervous causes full bladder or rectum reflexes inhibit uterine contraction idiopathic causes past history of postpartum hemorrhage and antepartum hemorrhage laceration and hematoma resulting from birth trauma suture should be placed if direct pressure doesn't stop the bleeding episiotomy increase blood loss and the risk of anaspinature tears and this procedure procedure should be avoided unless urgent delivery is necessary and the perineum is thought to be a limiting factor hematoma can be present as pain or as a change in vital sign Small hematoma can be managed with close observation patient with present sign of volume loss despite fluid replacement. With large or enlarged hematoma require incision and evocation of the clot. Coagulation disorder evaluation should include platelet count and the measurement of prothrombin time partial thromboplastin time fibrinogen level and fibrin spread product management consists of treating the underlying disease process support intravascular volume serially evaluate coagulation status and replace appropriate blood component administration clot promoting medication may be con preventive measure of postpartum postpartum hemorrhage during an antepartum period complete history should be taken to identify high risk patients who are likely to develop postpartum hemorrhage improvement of health status especially to raise the hemoglobin level hospital delivery of high risk patient routine blood grouping and the timing for immediate management during emergency human 
Woman who has hemorrhagic blood disease should give antifibrinolytic factor. During the intrapartum period, proper management during the labor include proper assessment, careful observation for mother and the baby, avoid misuse of oxytocin, avoid bearing down in first stage, empty bladder every one hour, unheard in delivery of placenta, prevention of tear by careful episiotomy, support perineum and maintain flexion, assessment for the amount of bleeding. Careful administration of sedative and analgesic drug, prophylactic administration of oxytoxic drug with delivery of anterior shoulder or at the end of the third stage, avoid massage the uterus before separation of the placenta. During the third stage, provide active management of third stage of labor. The single most effective way to prevent postpartum hemorrhage. Don't use frontal pressure. Don't perform a controlled cord detraction without administering an adrenaline drug. Laceration and the hematoma resulting from birth trauma. Suture should be placed if direct pressure doesn't stop the bleeding. Episiotomy increases blood loss and the risk of anaspinitial tears. And this procedure. procedure should be avoided unless urgent delivery is necessary and the zebranium is thought to be a limiting factor. Hematoma can be present as pain or as a change in vital sign. Small hematoma can be managed with close observation patient with present sign of at least every 15 minutes for the first two hours after a birth. Teach a woman massage her own uterus to keep it firm. Instruct here on how to check your uterus and to call for assistance of her uterus is soft or if she experiences increased vaginal bleeding. Preventive measure of postpartum hemorrhage during the antipartum period complete history should be taken to identify high risk patients who are likely to develop postpartum hemorrhage Improvement of a health status, especially to raise the hemoglobin level. Hospital delivery of high-risk patient. Routine blood grouping and the timing for immediate management during emergency. Woman, woman. Thank you. Thank you.